Hello. Uh, first, I just want to say thank you all for your time. I know your time is valuable. I really do appreciate you joining this webinar. And I'm going to try to be as concise as possible. I'm going to try to keep it under 30 minutes. And I'm going to try to make it as meaningful as possible. So hopefully you guys learn something through this presentation. Uh, the main topic today is going to be flow detection um, or flow-based threat detection is probably a better way to say that, right? And I'm also going to talk about Utters, which is our community-driven DDoS mitigation service. Uh, first, though, I'll just tell you a little bit about myself. Um, so I'm a solutions engineer here with Team Cymru, and I've been with the company for a while now, right? So training, configuration, demos, really whatever you need, um, I'm here to help in those efforts, right? I have my, um, my calendar there, as well as if you are on LinkedIn and you're watching this, please connect with me. Um, I love connecting with people in the community. Send me a message and uh, we'll link up on, you know, on LinkedIn or, or we can schedule a time to talk about any of these solutions in more detail. Uh, regarding Team Cymru, the company's been around since 2005. Uh, it's got a great mission of saving and improving human lives. Uh, they do this by just um, you know, empowering different organizations around the globe to fight badness on the internet. Now we do that with free solutions um, in, in outreach and we also have commercial offerings which you can learn more about on the website itself. Um, outreach as a division of uh, Team Cymru is, is, is awesome. It's got a great culture. Um, I work with people all around the globe, right? So in you know, Kenya or Brazil or different parts of Europe or you know, boring old Maine where I live. Um, it's just a really, really great division of, of Team Cymru. Um, and we do a bunch of stuff uh, for the community, whether that be uh, different events we host, different free tools and services like Nimbus and Utters, which we're gonna talk about today, or our mailing list, which you're all welcome to sign up for. It'll just kind of um, give you a daily, kind of keep your fingers on the pulse of what's happening in the security community. And our C-Cert assistance program. Um, so if you're, in, if you're a C-Cert and you sign up, it's just you know basically working with us to help fight badness out there on the internet. Um, so all of those are different kind of divisions of community services, but today, we're really gonna be talking about two of them. So Nimbus is a cloud-based uh, NetFlow collector or flow collector. It's built on Elasticsearch and Kibana. Uh, it's free to use, completely free to use for ISPs, hosting providers, C-certs. So if you're on this webinar or watching this, um, feel free to sign up. And really the special sauce of what Nimbus is doing is it's correlating your flow data with our reputation feed data, right? So. It's, um, it's designed to help you be able to kind of get a sense or intelligence around what's happening on your network and then helping you make informed decisions about different policies that you wanna um, you know, either put on the routers or just keep an eye on, um, you know, on your network, right? I think before even going into Nimbus though, um, just as a little bit of a primer, what I'm gonna do is talk about NetFlow as just a protocol, like how it works, um, and how it can be configured and some common questions that have been asked about it, right? So uh, flow data just as a protocol, the way to think about it, if we look at this, you know, this image here, as this packet comes inbound to the router um, and the router then makes a decision that it's gonna route the packet, what it will do is it will create an entry in its flow cache, right? And then it will begin tracking that connection. And whenever you're thinking about flow data, you always wanna be thinking about um, the key fields, right, and the non-key fields. It's a good kind of base level um, understanding about how flow data works and how it tracks connections. So key fields, if we're looking here, would be things like, you know, the uh, IP addresses, ports, uh, interfaces, protocol, right? If it's, a, if it's a persistent connection, key fields should not change. If they do change, well, then we have a new connection happening, right? Um, but non-key fields, things like bytes, uh, bits, TCP flags, would constantly be changing um, during a conversation, right, between two IP addresses. So if we watch, right, and we see that this packet then gets routed and more packets come inbound to the router, we'll see the bytes are incrementing, but the key fields are staying the same. It's not until a new packet, right, or a new key fields come into the router Right, where the router now says, oh, okay, so that connection ended, I'll bundle that flow up, and I'm gonna export it to a flow collector like Nimbus. Um, it's important to note though, for like persistent connections, things like VPN uh, connections, um, routers also have an active timeout, right? So you're typically setting something like every 60 seconds, 
clear your flow cache out and export it so you can kind of keep statistics on things that uh, the key fields aren't changing. So VPN connections or, or long like data backups are a great example of that, right? Um, typically though, I'm asked, um, aside from just how flow data works, um, there's really three questions that people ask a lot, right? So I'll cover those as well. Um, one is, um, how does turning on NetFlow and exporting it affect my bandwidth, right? Is this gonna impact my, the actual bandwidth of my network negatively? And the answer is no, it's not going to. Um, if you look at this datagram here, NetFlow is just packet header information, right? So if I'm connecting with somebody and we're transferring gigs and gigs and gigs of data, um, and our IP address and port doesn't change, right? You can summarize that with a single flow, right? So it's super efficient um, in how it records data. And because it's just a header and there's no payload, um, typically it's not gonna impact your bandwidth by exporting it, right? The other question is how does it affect the CPU of the router, right? Is it gonna, am I gonna like take my router offline by enabling flow data? Um, so I've been working with, with NetFlow as a protocol for over a decade now, and I can probably recall like two times that it's negatively affected a router um, or a switch. And that was you know probably like eight or nine years ago. The routers are just so efficient now. Uh, the protocol's really dialed in. You could likely just you know turn it on in midday in production and be fine. But you know just be aware you're probably going to want to schedule a maintenance window and configure it. Um, and I'm of course happy to help with best practices for configuration. So that's more on the device side, right? So like. Is it gonna impact CPU or is it gonna impact bandwidth? The next question people ask is like, well, where should I be turning it on, right? How, how do I turn it on in the network or where do I turn it on? And it's a great question, really. The way I like to explain it is just if we look at a network here, where we have, we'll call this Bob, it's my dad's name, um, and this Holly, it's my mom's name, we'll just keep it consistent, right? So if we have Bob communicating to Pier 1, and we have a NetFlow monitor applied there for each, as the connections are going in and out of that interface, the router will export flow data to Nimbus, right? Um, but if Holly, right, is communicating with Peer 2 and we haven't applied a monitor there, you'll see there's no flows being exported to Nimbus. So what do I mean by applying a monitor, right? When NetFlow is configured on a router, there's two ways that it's done, right? One is globally. That's where you actually are, you know, typically in like the global configuration of the router. I keep saying router, but it's really like the layer layer three device. So like a layer three switch or a router or a firewall um, or a wireless control or something like that. But globally, you'd go in and you'd say, okay, you're gonna start doing NetFlow now, Mr. Router, right? Um, here's the IP address you're gonna send flow data to. Um, here's the interface on the router that you're going to export the NetFlow data out of. So in our case here, right, you can see we've said send your NetFlow data out of this interface, right? Here's the active timeout. Here's what the NetFlow record looks like, right? Your global configurations. You then take those and you apply what's called monitors. You say like monitor this interface. So as traffic comes in or out of a particular interface, NetFlow gets generated for that interface, right? Um, and then if we kind of take this concept to a bigger network, right, one with multiple hops, you could have all the interfaces on a particular router turned on, but if you're not monitoring, you know, if you don't have them on a peer here on this router, um, right, and traffic's going across that router and you're not seeing it in your flow collector, it's simply that you could have turned on the global configurations, but you have to make sure you're turning on the monitors on the interfaces themselves. Why am I going into all this detail? Aside from loving the protocol, the other thing is, um, you know, if you're looking at commercial solutions, a lot of them charge based off of the amount of flows per second that you're collecting, right? Or the number of exporters you're monitoring or the number of interfaces you're turning flow data on. So understanding the protocol at the level of like, you know, where you're applying the monitors can help you be more strategic in how you're deploying the technology in your network. So if you're focusing on like funnel points where a lot of the traffic goes through and you apply the monitors there, you're gonna get a lot of visibility in those aspects. Um, it doesn't matter with Nimbus, Nimbus is free to use. You can enable as many devices as you want, right? As many interfaces, you just send the flow data over, it's fine. But it's just one of those concepts that I think I get asked a lot, um, you know, basically because people, you know, maybe trying to figure out you know, a billing for a commercial solution, 
or just in general, like, you know, do I turn it on everywhere or, or just in some locations? And, and that's why I like to cover just right how the protocol works and, and how it can be configured on the network. Um, if you are using IPv6 as well, I put a bullet in there. Um, you know, just one change to a configuration typically will export IPv6 metrics. And what's really great about that is we do the reputation checking um, both for IPv4 and v6. So if you are running v6 on your network, definitely turn that on as well if you plan on, on taking part in Nimbus TM. Uh, but really, like, you know, why use Nimbus, right? Why not just use an open source flow collector out there? What's, what's so great about Nimbus TM? Well, there's a few things, right? First of all, it's free, which is awesome. Uh, the second, it's cloud hosted, so you don't have to worry about spinning up infrastructure um, you know, on your network to maintain it. And the third thing is really the special sauce, right? So Team Cymru, as I said, as an organization has its commercial arm, um, which is industry leading threat intelligence and reputation data. Um, partners of Nimbus, right? What we'll do, or what Nimbus will do, I guess more accurately, is take that NetFlow datagram that we were looking at before and then enrich it with a layer of metadata um, to give more context about potential threats on your network, right? So everything in red you see here um, in this particular slide are things that Nimbus is adding into the flow data. So the source ASN and destination ASN are just great for grouping, right? Think if you wanna look at your entire um, autonomous system and see which IP addresses could be infected with malware, instead of having to apply filters like you know, subnet filters or you know, you know, range of IP addresses or multiple subnet filters, you can just say, um, let me see data for my ASN, and then it would show you all the alert IPs. Um, if, you're paying, if you're paying attention or looking closely, right, you'll see that the alert IP here matches the source IP uh, in, that, in, in that source IP field. So what that's saying is the source IP in this NetFlow packet shows up on Team Cymru's um, reputation list, and we're marking that as an alert IP. To the right of that, we're also saying, well, this alert IP is associated to this autonomous system number. Um, so we're marking that as an alert ASN. Um, and then the signature, which, again, my name is Brian. It's not the most, like, I guess, uh, creative name for a malware. Uh, but that's the actual malware variant that we see that IP address participating in or what botnet it's a part of. So you'd see things there like configure, right, or different proxy servers. Um, and then we have a confidence rating. So that's how certain Team Cymru is that this IP address is part of a botnet, right? A confidence score of 100 would means we are absolutely sure. We typically start alerting around a confidence score of 40. That really is the special sauce within, you know, within uh, Nimbus itself, right? It's giving you the ability to profile your network um, and see you know, where there might be potential threats. Now, I don't wanna, you know, I'd be remiss to say it's only for network for threat detection, right? Um, or threat intelligence, because there are other aspects that you can utilize NetFlow data for, right? It's been around for a very long time. Um, and one of the, the great things is just gathering statistics on, how, on traffic, right? Most projects in IT always start with visibility, right? You need to have some kind of intelligence about how traffic is moving and how data is moving in order to make informed decisions. So if we think about like, you know, potentially peering with another ISP if we're an internet service provider, or we wanna keep, uh, you know, track of transit costs, right? Flow data is a great way in order to do that, right? So what I'm, I'm doing here in Nimbus is I've just filtered on Amazon, right? And I filtered on us as a source. Um, and what I'm looking at is the trend of uh, bits per second to Amazon over time, right? And what protocol? I picked Amazon just because it's kind of a well-known autonomous system. But if you're, you know, if you're an ISP and somebody is asking you to peer with them, um, and you have a Nimbus deployment, you could go and look at their autonomous system and see, well, how much data are we really communicating back and forth, right? Or, you know, potentially you could be looking within Nimbus and seeing, you know, the same autonomous system showing up over and over again in, in different charts and say, well, you know, maybe that's somebody I want to approach to do a peering relationship with, right? Because you can see how much traffic is going to them over time. So just enriching it with that ASN information makes the NetFlow data a lot more valuable, a lot more consumable. Um, you can throw it on like a big screen monitor on the wall type deal, right? Um, and then, like I said, right, so we're gonna tag the alert IP address, but also that alert ASN aspect of it. So what that allows you to do within the Nimbus interface is 
you can click on your particular ASN. So again, if you haven't learned anything so far, you've learned that my naming conventions for things aren't great, but here you'll see Brian Co. ASN, which is some fictitious company that I'll, I'll someday start. But by simply applying that ASN as a filter, we now see every IP address within Brian Co. that is an alert IP, right? So it's the alert ASN, although it's kind of just, you, you look at it and it's a nice to have, um, it really does make the filtering in Nimbus a lot easier um, as well. Um, and I've talked a little bit, really mostly about like the IPs and, and uh, the uh, autonomous systems so far, but there was that, um, the column, which was like the, the signature of the family, right? So this is just an example that you would get within a Nimbus dashboard, which is showing you um, all the different alert signatures we see on your network. Um, you can trend those over time, right? Different histograms for different malware families. So if you're under, you know, an attack or you see a large spike, um, right? You can drill into that. You can see where it's coming from, what IP addresses are involved in it. And really the giant kind of, you know, panel view of Nimbus gives you all of this information. Um, and because it's built on Kibana, it's very easy to, you know, you click on a particular you know, botnet family, you would see all the alert IPs associated to it and all the alert ASNs that are associated to it. You can drill in, switch timeframes. Um, Kavana is an extremely intuitive user interface to use. It's very easy to click around and figure out. But, you know, part of what I do as a solution engineer is do training on it. So, you know, if you sign up for the service, uh, typically we'll have a call with you guys. We can go over your particular instance of Nimbus kind of drag and drill and answer questions, help to configure devices. It's all there for you, right? Um, and it's extremely customizable. You can build your own dashboards um, within, the, within the solution as well. Uh, that's really just a high level of kind of how flow data works, what Nimbus is doing with that flow data, how it's visualizing it, and some, some very quick use cases, right? Whether it's finding different peers or maybe alerting peers of different Right, if you wanna you know, tell a neighbor ISP, hey, we're seeing a lot of botnet traffic come out of your, your network from this range of IP addresses, right? And send them a report, or we even have ISPs that monetize it, right? As a service to people they're selling transit to and say, hey, we can sell you transit or we can sell you transit with some reporting as well. Um, the, it's, the data is yours to do what you want with it. Um, what I'm doing here is just showing you examples of how it works and how it's visualized within Nimbus TM, right? Um, so definitely encourage you all to sign up for Nimbus, check it out, um, you know, it's free to use, even if you're a small network, you want to sign up, if you're a large network and you want to sign up, just, you know, feel free to go sign up for it. We can do a training and talk about it in more detail. Um, the other service I want to, I want to briefly talk about as well is the Utter service. So Utters, you see the cow there, right? Really stands for unwanted traffic removal service. Um, this is a community approach to DDoS mitigation. So the biggest thing here, again, all the community services are free, right? DDoS mitigation can be an extremely expensive service, right? cost prohibitive to, for some ISPs. Utters is, um, it's free to use and it's basically, um, the more people that are involved in Utters, the better the system gets. We have about 1200 right now. Um, it's been around for a while. It's been growing so fast. Actually, we have an Utters 2.0, which I'll talk about um, here in a second. Um, that we were putting in a little more work because of all the feature requests we've gotten for Utters in and of itself, right? And that'll be out in around June. Uh, to think about Utters though, it's, it's kind of like remote trigger black hole, but it's, um, it's more upstream than your direct, like next hop out, where you could, you know, kind of go into um, your upstream provider and say, hey, black hole, there's traffic. Um, Utters allows you to do that, you know, further out in the internet and have more of a graphical representation that I think will help, um, help with that understanding, right? Uh, but just a quick sneak peek of Utters 2.0. Uh, so some of the new features is we're adding in flow spec report, uh, flow spec support, excuse me. Um, and flow spec is, you can almost think of it like ACLs, but it's, it's a way to kind of more tune your, um, right, your black holing. So in Utters today, you can make the announcement to say, hey, everybody in the other you know, system, stop sending data to this IP address, right? Um, where if you, you, you know, maybe you're using Nimbus and you see the DDoS is coming over like NTP or SNMP or something like that, um, and you just want to black hole 
traffic to that IP address if it's using NTP as a port. FlowSpec is what allows you to do that, right? We're also adding an RPKI validation. We do do validation today, but it's just another layer of validation where you could maybe have somebody, if you wanted them to make the announcement on your behalf, um, you can use that as a validation metric. Today, we won't make announcements for um, people if they don't own the IP address, right? So if we see you know, an announcement come in from somebody that for an IP address that they don't own, um, the other system won't make that announcement. But if you wanted to add that additional layer of validation, so potentially your upstream provider could make an announcement for you, um, that's what RK, RPKI will get for you. Um, we're adding in support for IPv6 um, and also CIDR notation, right? So if you want to black hole traffic to a particular network, right, you can do that instead of just you know, having to make multiple um, announcements for multiple IP addresses. Drink some water here, just one second. To visually demonstrate how, how um, others works, just pull up a graph here or a graphical representation of an attack happening, right? So in your typical attack, right, we have traffic coming in from all over the internet, right, to, a, to, a, to maybe a single victim or a range of IP addresses. In this case, it's just a single victim. Now what you could do, um, right, is you could make an announcement to your upstream provider and tell them, hey, stop sending traffic to this IP address, right? Now, the problem here is, you know, you're, first off, you have to rely on your upstream provider to do that for you. But the other thing is, right, this traffic is still riding over the internet, right? So there's still um, a whole bunch of bad traffic that's riding over the internet, and it's really only getting blocked at that, that hop into you. Um, whereas with with others, what happens is all of the different um, providers on the internet that are peered with Team Cymru will receive the announcement from us on your behalf, right? So you would you would then, as a provider, make an announcement to us and say, "Hey, I want to stop. I want traffic to stop to this particular IP address." We then propagate that out to all the partners within others, and then you'll see here, right? The impact is is much greater. Where we're saying, um, you know, stop it upstream. And then it will really kind of bring an attack down to its knees quickly. Um, that's, again, I said thank you for your time. I wanted to keep this brief, give you a quick view of what Team Cymru is, what the community services are. Um, again, you know, thank you all so much for your time. I really, really do appreciate it. If you have any questions at all, um, you know, you can uh, reach out just directly at outreach at, at um, or, you know, sign up for any of the services it's outreach at Comrie.com, sorry, or sign up for any of the services on our website. Please do connect to me on LinkedIn, and hopefully I look forward to working with a bunch of you on um, coming projects. Thank you again for your time. Have a great day.